everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Stephanie. We just did a tour, uh, we just did an interview with Stephanie and uh, met her and learned about her story. And today we're going to take a, a tour of her runaway camper. And I think it offers so many advantages for so many people. Let's take a look. So Stephanie, would you mind showing us around your rig? Sure, welcome. Come on over. So, welcome sign for everybody. Um, right. You'll notice my flags up there. My trailer and my camp is a safe space for everybody. Doesn't matter what walk of life you come from, what color your skin is, what your religious beliefs are. So I fly those flags high and proud to let people know that. Um, this is a 2016 runaway camper. It was a custom build for me. Um, what we're looking at is the uh, passenger side. Basically we have a window unit. Both sides have a window with a screen, which helps if you crack these at night for condensation. Um, I have the roof racks. This just holds additional tarp material if I want to make like a, a portable awning at the time kind of a thing. And you got the rear door. That I do. was an extra you paid for. Um, and I can actually swing that over and let you see um, because they have their website right on the bottom. So if folks want to just do a, hit the pause button on this video, they can write that website down. <clears throat> and the folks down there in Florida at this plant are so friendly and helpful. Um, one, of the, one of the features that I had added was another uh, hitch so that I can put a shelf back here. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is, uh, because I'm part-timing now and I'm still learning, I'm going to have a shelf put back here that when I'm camped out in here, I could put like a cooler on. Yes. Or maybe when I'm traveling, I could strap the, uh, you know, the cooler or whatever water can, gas cans, whatever I might need out of the way so they're not in the car and I'm not breathing those fumes. A lot of storage back there. Absolutely. Uh, here I just have my lawn chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, I've learned out at BLM land, uh, there's not a whole lot of natural seating unless you want something hard. And with my, my lower back injury and my, my, my leg injury, I can't do that. So camper chairs, they're like $5 chairs from the dollar store. Right. Set up, tear down at night. I tear them down and I strap them to the roof rack and they're out of the way. So we've stepped inside and this is your, uh, your nice little home. So tell us about how you've got it set up. Okay. So this is my day use setup. I have two fold-up lawn chairs back there that you may have seen in the last little snippet. Mm -hmm. um, I set them up opposite of each other. I can either look outside in a nice day, or I have, um, if it's bad weather, um, if I'm at a, a RV park or something, I have a cable cord outside. Um, I just installed this arm in a small television um, game system. I don't play it too often, but if you don't have anything to watch, if you're out boondocking or whatever, um, Runaway installed this air conditioner. It was an extra feature and it uses RV power. It's a low watt AC unit so it doesn't put much of a drain on the generator or um, shore power. So you can run it off your little generator. My, my 2200 Generac will power everything and anything I need and I can actually run extension cord to another camper and give them power. Oh, wow. um, if I do that, if it's not running at the 1700 watts, it, it gets a little bit louder. But on low, on low operation, it runs at about 65 decibels, which isn't too bad. Mm -hmm. um, something that I like to do, I actually got off of another YouTuber. I think it was Katie Carney's page, fabric softener sheets. I just tuck them up in the vents, and they freshen up the whole area. Oh, yeah. Because out here in a dusty environment, um, it can get really smelly. So keeping the trailer uh, closed and having some fresh fabric softener really helps just to kind of freshen up the environment um, and make it feel a little bit cleaner in here. Mm -hmm. Um, I installed these clothing racks that I had from a fold-up unit at my house, kind of like when you put up a, a second like closet type system, shelving system. But because my, my roof supports uh, have some flexibility, I was able to install these. And typically when I go into night mode, I'll bring in my set of clothing for the next day, my bath towel for the shower that evening, and I'll hang that, those items up here. And um, I'll have them available in the morning first thing. I can get dressed and grab my towel and go take my shower or whatnot. So your storage is in, you have a Toyota CRV. That's your storage. My Honda, yes. Right, a, a Honda CRV. And so, you know, you use that for storage and you get things and bring them back here. Yes. When you need, as you need them. Yeah, I have another rack like this in my Honda in the back seat. Most of my clothing are kept there. Right. Because they can stay wrinkle free and right. I'm not really um, disturbing them all that much. And it also frees up a lot more living space in here because right. the less a person feels cramped, I think the more they can actually relax. Yes. I basically have, this is like my hardware shelf. I keep zip ties, bungee cords, duct tape, my dust mop kind of a thing. Here I just have a miscellaneous shelf. I keep extra gloves, hats, scarves, 
um, just another stuffed animal to stuff space. There's another um, power strip back here. Runaway installed this for me, and they installed the other one in that corner. So depending on what I'm powering at each end of the trailer, I don't have to run a bunch of extension cords. You do go to RV parks with it also. Yes, I just plug in the shore power at the RV park. And have you had any problems with, uh, you know, it's a small trailer, no one has objected? At the RV park? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. you're welcomed in. Yeah, matter of fact, I've been at almost a dozen KOAs uh, from from the Midwest to California, and I've never had a problem. It seems like the mobile community in general have been very friendly to me. Right. Um, I haven't experienced, like, classism with, well, you have a little travel trailer, and I've got a 40-footer. It's always been, hey, neighbor, hey, neighbor, how you doing? You know, kind right. of a thing. So maybe I've been blessed. Maybe it's my personality. <laughs> I, I don't friendly know. Friendly people attract friendly people. Yeah. I have a couple luxuries. Most of the time, I really don't have time for them. Um, down here, I keep like batteries, extra lights for the flash or for the lamp. I carry an extra army light, and I have a mag light there in the corner, and another one in my rucksack, which I'm going to use for a class I'm teaching later. And this is a great place in the car to put together a lesson plan. It's quiet. I have lighting if I needed to take notes. Um, I have plenty of room. Like my my materials here would normally be up here, um, but they're out of course for the class. Here is just more storage. Like if I'm in a nicer place and I don't want to draw attention to myself, I can wear like my dress flats um, with a nicer outfit. Out here I'm wearing tennis shoes, you know, understandably. Um, and this whole shelf unit, they built for you. They built, they built this. It's very yep. nice. It's an additional item you can have added on. Um, but I thought it was very worth it because what's the alternative for me? Stacking milk crates or trying to build my own build. And, you know, I don't have a garage with tools and that kind of thing. Uh, when I ordered this, I was living in a very small apartment in San Francisco, so that wasn't an option for me. Uh, but, you know, I, I try to make it like home. I have pictures of my family, um, you know, a first aid kit here and one in my rucksack. I keep all of my bathroom items, personal hygiene items over there where they're easily accessible. Um, and it's comfortable. It It is a really, really nice place. The carpet I got at a, um, I got on clearance at a, like a Walmart or something for like 12 bucks. It fits the trailer, and the nice thing is when I put my mats down for my bed configuration, they grip so my mats don't slide around so that I can sleep comfortably. And it also is an extra level of insulation between the uh, tile floor and the bottom of the trailer and the, and the cabin, so it helps add an extra layer of warmth. Uh, let's mention again where your, where your bed is right now. Like, it's it? on top of the trailer. Right. I have two large mats. It was a unit that Runaway actually makes for $80. Um, it's a three, it's like a tr three mat trifold configuration that goes from a sofa to a bed. I modified mine and I got rid of the headpiece and just used the two big mats that I lay down. And basically they go from about here to about here, from about a foot from the cabinet to about six inches from the door. So it's wide enough for two people. And I have a foam topper that I have also rolled up on the trailer that I put down on top of those mats so that I don't feel the little... A partition where they come together in the middle and it's actually very comfortable for me. I, I sleep quite comfortably even with my back problems. It's plenty of uh, cushioning for me and it's it's because I'm up higher off the floor of the trailer and with my little heater right there I stay very warm and comfortable. So the, basically you just it's a fold-up bed you store it away up above while during the day while you're in here yeah. lounging. Yeah or sometimes if it's inclement weather I will put the two um, I'll put the two foam pads against that wall, and I'll just strap them in with a um, bungee cord. Right. And I'll keep the rolled up foam part next to it secured. And then I still have over over half of the trailer space available. So there's many options, and I've played with configurations a couple times. And I, I've actually, since being out here, have learned other ways to configure my trailer from other campers who have lived in like cargo conversion trailers, which I think is very interesting. Um, and, and I'm sure as I get more acclimated from going part-time to full-time, I may find a different system. I might do a cot or I might get rid of the, the cushions and do something else. I'm very open to, you know, whatever seems to work better and what's more efficient. So you actually have uh, three doors, two on each side and uh, the big one in back and two windows, one on each side. It's very open. It's not, you don't feel claustrophobic in there at all. Not at all. good weather. Right. I'm not able to stand up, but I can fully sit up even in those fold-up chairs, so I have plenty of headroom, uh, which is nice. 
Um, so out here, it's just the other side, the diamond plated uh, mud flaps. Right. Um, I do have a spare tire that Runaway provides. Over here, the roof racks, they're holding the foam topper down to the top of my mattress. And uh, this is the digital TV antenna that I have. It is a power one. If I'm at a place that has cable, I just undo this, disconnect the cable, put it away in storage, and just plug in the shore, you know, cable line. Here you got your generator, your water, more storage, gas for the generator. Um, I like to carry at least three gallons. Uh, one for the generator. This generator, it's a Generac 2200. This one set me back um, about $650. It's, it runs at a quieter capacity of about 60 to 65 decibels per, uh, per operation in low mode, which a three to four person conversation would be about 70 decibels. So uh, one gallon of gas will operate this generator for 10 hours. Wow, that's so I can, nice. So I can top it off before I turn in for the evening. Um, and I have a very long cord. What I like to do is just for safety and concern about carbon monoxide, I will run that cable as far away from where sure. I'm sleeping as possible and downwind of me and then just run it from the generator to the trailer and then I have the power that I need. Uh, water, this is a six gallon container of water. Um, I purchased this at a Walmart and basically I just put my name on it in water. Yeah. And when I travel, I only keep about a half a gallon to just reduce the weight. Um, when I get to where I'm going, I find a local water source. This black box is just a toolbox. I keep my emergency jack, emergency tools. Um, I keep WD-40 for my locks. I keep uh, tire chains for when I'm going through the Sierra Nevadas or other mountain ranges. Any type of safety equipment that I might need, flares, what have you, are in this box. And when I'm on the road, I just tie this box down with rope right to the shelf there. Mm -hmm. And this is my emergency survival bag. Um, I'm going to actually lay this out in a class today at the women's uh, RTR and explain the different types of equipment that can keep a person alive if they are completely cut off and lost and how that can work. Um, this is my camper stove. Um, it's just a propane two burner Coleman sport type camper stove. And when I cook, I can clear off this box, set it on the side, cook right there, or I can just take it off away from the camp and put it up on a cooler or something and cook. The rest of this, I just have clean laundry that's folded in here. Uh, my bedding is up in the front seat. I can introduce you to a very special friend. Um, her name is Tatiana. She is an East African sand boa constrictor. And she is a therapy companion. As a disabled veteran, I struggle with PTSD and depression. And because of my boba life, I, it's not practical to have a cat or a dog. Um, I couldn't, you know, do that at the time that I got Tatiana. So my VA therapist said, you know, you should have a therapy companion that you can just, you know, not feel alone with. And so I have Tatiana, and she's great. I can talk to her. I can vent. I can just relax with someone in the trailer and not feel alone. Um, and there's just the, the therapeutic value of having a pet in general is a wonderful thing, especially if you live alone and travel alone and don't know a lot of people. Um... But she is the main reason why I have to have power 24-7 because as a East African sand boa, her temperature, her ambient temperature in the aquarium on the hot side has to be at least 90 degrees. And so I run a special heat lamp to maintain that, that constant temperature on the hot side of her aquarium. But she's like family. She's, she's my best close friend and I don't go anywhere without her. And so... Uh, Normally, at nighttime, her aquarium is in the trailer next to the bed, and I have the heater on, um, the heat lamp on her aquarium, and she's just a happy camper. Even out here, she's very happy. She's healthy. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Really, really nice. I love your setup. I love your attitude. You're wanting to help people, and, and uh, you survived some hard things and, and got a smile. That's, <laughs> that's everything in life. So, folks, I hope you've learned something here. you got some ideas. Uh, and a smile here and there too. So if you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.